year. Uh, I see lots of signs that, of hope. Um, so that's what I would like. Um, and if it does what it did for me and for lots of people, that would be wonderful because uh, I'll, I'll finish by just describing a story, and I tell this story in the book as well. Um, I, as I went through life, and even David died, incidentally, when I was nine, nine years after I met him, which is 20, 20 years ago now. Um, but I always wondered whether what he'd given me was right in the eyes of the church. He was a Catholic, but he wasn't a priest or anything like that. And um, so when I, when I met experts in the field, I would ask them, and one of them was a priest at the Duomo in Florence. He was a, an art historian from Yale, an American, who had a late vocation. He used to take people on tours, become a priest, and was now... Um, on the staff, part of the Italian church. And one way or another, I managed to get to meet him. It's quite difficult to do so because all the everybody wanted to see this art historian priest, all the British and American people it, it were in Florence and Italy. So eventually I managed to see him and I wanted advice on setting up art schools. And uh, so I thought I'd just describe my plan to him and see what what he said. So he welcomed me in, and I just launched into it. And this is a, something I'd thought about for years, a speech I'd, you know, I'd rehearsed many, many times, so I knew exactly what I was going to say. And he listened to me, and he said, I think this, this will work, actually. You might like to change this, you might like to change that, but this works. He asked me a few questions, and okay, that's, I think there's a good chance this will work. So I was very encouraged by this. And then he said... Furthermore, I think you should do it. And I said, what do you mean by that? He said, I think it's your personal vocation to do this. And I said, why? And he said, I just the way you talk about it, the passion with which you do it, the, your reasons for doing it, I don't know precisely what he saw, but that's what he said to me. And then he said something that was interesting. It was both good and bad from my point of view. He said, because I, I thought, well, at the stroke of a pen, he could help me. He could open doors and establish. He said, I'm not going to help you with this. I want you to go ahead and do this. Uh, but he said, one thing that I'm certain about is you're meant to do this. And if you do, I can't even promise you that you'll succeed, he said. <laughs> he said, but what you will do, whether you're aware of it or not, is you will draw people to the faith because that is what our personal vocation is. When we're fulfilled and we're striving for what we want to do, we will we will be fulfilled. What we want to, to do, if it can coincide with God's will, of course, then we will be fulfilled. And it is that that attracts people to the faith. And he said, you may not even be aware of results in that area. You just don't know how you're affecting people. But it, one thing is for certain, you will be happy and fulfilled if you follow that, he believed. Um, and I thought that was very interesting. And so I've held that, held on to that thought. And I would love to see that that effect in, in the East Bay. And also, in, we're aware of a crisis in Western culture. Why not try to transform the culture and evangelize the culture person to person in this way? So your vision for the vision for you, uh, getting more concrete, you've talked about retreats, Oh yes, I, I, if there's interest, I would. I sponsor people already. A couple of people have contacted me and said, "Will you take me through the process?" And so I'm doing that as, to the degree I have capacity. Um, but I would like to have see these workshops set up. I'd like to see people setting up communities whereby they derive more than just simply a personal path from this, um, and all of this then shaping the culture and, and society. Retreats, I, I happily be involved with where we go through the process maybe in a concentrated way and uh, actually then people can learn to chant the liturgy of the hours in English um, which I think is very powerful if we can do that and that I've learned how to do that so I'd happily pass that on. I'd, if you ask me for what my what the life I would enjoy it's just passing this on and then having these workshops and retreats and just my whole life revolving around that I think and then bit of painting on the side would be would be wonderful yeah here in the bay area it does seem like spiritual retreats are a dime a dozen yes um that doesn't mean that this is the one of course we have to we have to wait and see but i think that somebody should be trying this uh, the, the more people that try the more we'll find the one that actually gives them what they're looking for which is 
Western mysticism, which is, in other words, by that I mean Christian mysticism, um, that gives that will give people what they really want, I believe, if we package it right. Here we are sitting in the uh, little <coughs> outdoor patio area of the convent where uh, this was one of the things I think that was on the list of your goals of one of our hikes recently, and now we can see that it's it's come into fruition, so it's more proof that the that the process works. So again, the book is The Vision for You, How to Discover the Life You Were Made For. It's available at thewayofbeauty.org and on Amazon. Uh, I've been speaking with its author, David Clayton, from the St. Jerome's Convent in El Cerrito. Uh, David, do you have any closing comments? No, just uh, good luck and, and uh, pray for me and I'll pray for you. I, I just hope that through this we can see a change in, in society and certainly in your lives. Amen. You've been listening to the Way of Beauty podcast, conversations on Catholic faith and culture. For more information, go to thewayofbeauty.org and if you want to buy the book, go to amazon.com.